Hello friends, welcome back again to class. We have a topic to look at, indices. We shall be considering the laws of indices, and when we have done that, we will solve these four problems we have on the board. We will not stop here. In my subsequent videos, I will solve other problems that have to do with indices. So what is indices? Indices is the plural form of the word index. Index. Another word for index is power or exponent exponent these are words we can use in place of the other referring to the same thing now what is an index index shows the number of times a number can multiply itself to obtain a product for instance i have a raised to the power of two two is the index and a the base you can call a the base whereas this is my index or power or exponent so this two here shows how many times a multiplies itself to obtain each product so i will say a times a to have a squared same thing happens when i have a number let's say i have three raised to the power of three my index is three this three shows the number of times the base three will multiply itself to obtain the product of the multiples so I will have three times three times three. So this is what indices talks about. So we're having 27. So indices helps us know the number of times a base or a particular number will multiply itself to obtain a particular product. So we shall be considering the laws of indices after which we will now simplify these problems. Okay, but please, before we continue, subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon there so that whenever I upload a useful material on mathematics videos, you'll be notified. Please like this video as well. Thank you very much. So let's consider the laws of indices. The first we shall be considering is multiplication law. I have a raised to the power m times a raised to the power n. So each time you have the same base multiplying each other, all you need to do is to add the powers. So M and N we add, I will take one base. For an example, I have A raised to the power of 3 times A raised to the power of 2. The outcome is A raised to the power of 5 because 3 and 2 we add together. Okay. Now, let's take this to the first part of it. The second part of it is when I have different bases or the powers are equal. For instance, I have A times B raised to the power M raised to the power M. The powers are equal. So all I will do is to factor the power out and multiply the two terms. So A will multiply A, B will multiply B, then I will take one of the powers. For an example, if I have 3 times 4 to the power of 2 and to the power of 2. To simplify this, I will simply take 3 times 4 raised to the power of 2. The bases are different, but the powers are same. Let's consider the third part of this number one. That has to do with equation. I have a raised to the power m equal to a raised to the power of n. The both bases are equal and we have an um, equality sign in between. All you need to do is to tell us that the, base, the powers are also equal. So m will be equal to n. For an instance, I have a raised to the power of 3 equal to a raised to the power of x. What is the value of x? Simply, the value of x will be 3. Because the bases are equal, obviously the powers are also equal. Then let's consider the second law of indices. The second law we're considering is division. a raised to the power of m is divided by a raised to the power of n. Whenever the same base are dividing themselves, all you need to do is to take one base and subtract the powers. For an instance, I have 4 raised to the power 3 divided by 4 raised to the power of 4. Now the bases are equal. So what I'll do is to take one base and subtract the powers 3 minus 4, which will give us 4 raised to the power of minus 1. Okay, so let's consider the third one. I have a raised to the power of um, 1 over 2. This is a square root. So I'll simply say that this is square root of a. Each time you have 1 over 2 as your power, 
it is a square root. But meanwhile, if it is 3, then you will have a cube root. This becomes cube root of A. Okay? So, um, monitor what you have here. Whatever number you have as your denominator comes here as the root of the given base. Okay? Now, let's consider this as first part and consider this as second part. Sometimes you are given A raised to the power of, um, let's say, N over M. A number at the numerator, a number at the denominator. How do we simplify? The denominator is your root. So I will have M here. Root A raised to the power of N. Your numerator is power. Your denominator is your root. Look at this example. I have A raised to the power of 2 over 3. This gives me the cube root of A raised to the power of 2. Let's consider another example. I have 8 raised to the power of 2 over 5. This is same as the fifth root of 8 raised to the power of 2. So each time you have a fraction where your numerator is not a unit, not a 1, then it is the power of the given function or expression. Let's consider another law. Another law we consider is the zero index. That should, should be the fourth. The zero index. Each time you have a number raised to the power of zero, that is one. For an example, I have 10 raised to the power of zero. The value is one. For every number you have, 101,230,0.5 raised to the power of zero, the value is equivalent to one. Then let's consider this one. When we have two powers, um, e raised to the power of m power n, both the both powers will multiply themselves. So I'll be having e raised to the power of m n. So if we take this as an example, let's say I have 8 raised to the power of 2 raised to the power of 3. Obviously 2 will multiply 3, so I'll have 8 raised to the power of 6. Let's consider an inverse power. Whenever we have a raised to minus 1, okay, it is written as 1 over A. This is inverse law. And the reciprocal, or you can call it reciprocal, the reciprocal of A is 1 over A. Let's assume I have, let's assume I have 4 raised to inverse 1. Obviously, it is 1 over 4. But sometimes, you have a number here beyond 1. For an instance, A raised to power minus 2. This minus 2 will remain the power of A, but will be written as a fraction whose numerator is 1. So I'll have A raised to the power of 2. So each time you have your inverse function or power that has a number that is not 1, that number remains the power of the given base, but you will now introduce 1 as the numerator of that given base. So let's apply those laws in simplifying those functions. The first I have is h power 1 over 3 times 5 power 2 over 3 all over 10 raised to the power of 2 over 3. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to reduce this guy to a base of 2 whose power is 3. Look at what I mean. This is 2 raised to the power 3. 2 raised to the power 3 is same thing as 8. Remember, you have 1 over 3 here, so I multiply 1 over 3 times... Let's bring this down. 5 raised to power 2 over 3 all over. Let's separate this 10 into multiples of 2 and 5. Since I have 2 here, I have 5 here. I will say 2 times 5 will give me 10. I want to believe you remember the law that addressed it. Remember when we said that if you have different bases, A times B, raised to the same power. You can factor the power outside, so you now have A times B raised to the power of M. In the same vein, you can split a number into two and share the, the, the power to the two numbers. That is what I want to do here now. Look at what will happen. I will have 2 raised to the power of 1 because 3 will cancel 3 times 5 raised to the power of 2 over 3 all over separate this guy and share the power to the both of them. So I'll have 2 raised to the power of 2 over 3 times 
5 raised to the power of 2 over 3. So this law addressed it. You have, you have it like this, you can bring it together. You can split it like this and share the powers to the both of them. Now you remember the law of indices that says when you have a division and you have the same basis, you subtract their powers. Let's apply that to simplify here. So I'll be having 2 raised to the power of 1 minus 2 over 3 times this one now, 5 raised to the power of 2 over 3 minus 2 over 3. So, so since the, these bases are equal, these bases are equal, all we need to do is to take the powers and subtract the powers. So if one subtracts 2 over 3, we are going to be having 2 raised to the power 1 over 3 times 5 raised to the power 2 over 3 minus 2 over 3 is going to give us 0. So we have 5 raised to the power of 0. Now any number raised to the power of 0 is 1. 1 times 2 raised to the power of 3 gives us 2 raised to the power of 1 over 3, which is the same thing as cube roots of 2. So this becomes a final answer. You can take the video back again and observe my steps gradually. You will understand it very well. Let's solve the second one. So the second one, we have 81 raised to the power of 3 over 4 minus 27 power 1 over 3 all over 3 times 2 power 3. So what do we do? Reduce this guy, write it as index whose base is 3. This is 3 raised to the power of 4. 3 power 4 will give us 81. Multiplying 3 over 4. Minus, over here, write this also as index. 3 raised to the power of 3 will give us 27. Times 1 over 3. And this over 3 times 2 power 3. Now, because we are multiplying 4 against this fraction, 4 can cancel this. I will only have 3 remaining. So I will have 3 power 3. Minus... Um, over here, I will have 3 to cancel 3, so I will have 3 remaining. And this is over 3 times 8. 2 raised to the power 3 is 8. Then 3 raised to the power 3 should give us 24, 27 minus 3 over 3 times 8 will give us 24. Now 27 minus 3 should give us 24 all over 24. If you divide, you obtain 1. So 1 is the solution to the second question. Let's solve the third one quickly. I have the square cube root of 64 r raised to the power minus 6 raised to the power of 1 over 2. To solve this third question, let's expand the square root first. Remember the law that says where you have cube root of x is the same as or 1 over 3. Okay, let's do that here. So I'll open a big bracket, write everything inside here. This is 64 raised to the power r minus 6 or 1 over 2. This guy comes up as 1 over 3. Then remember the power laws. When you have two powers that are multiplying each other, you multiply them. So we are going to have 64 raised to the power of minus, minus 6 raised to the power of 1, 1 over 2 times 1 over 3 will give us 1 over 6. Now this 64 can be written as 2 raised to the power of 6. So we have 2 raised to the power of 6, r minus 6, all raised to the power of 1 over 6. So what next do we do? This power can expand this bracket. This guy multiply here, this guy multiply here. So we are going to be having 2 raised to the power of 6 times 1 over 6. Multiplying r raised to the power of 6, minus 6, times 1 over 6. So 6, we cancel 6. I will have 2 raised to the power of 1 times r. 6, we cancel negative 6. I will have negative 1. Remember the law of inverse, inverse power. If you have a raised to the power of minus 1, what do you have? 1 over a. Let's apply that here. So we are going to be having 2 times 1 over R. This guy has changed into a fraction. So 2 multiplying 1 will give me 2. So the solution becomes 2 over R. That is the solution to the third question. I want you to apply the laws of indices as we have considered to solve the fourth question 
as your assignment then drop your answer in the comment section i'll be glad to have it there okay you can always go back to the laws and see how to apply it but let me tell you the first step you are going to take the first step you will take is to expand the decimal fractions and write them as um as fractions proper fractions we are going to be having 2 over 10 because i have one decimal place raised to the power of 3 times 8 over over here we have 4 over 10 raised to the power of 2 then simplify it drop your answer in the comment section thank you so much for paying attention to the end of the class please i want to encourage you subscribe to my youtube channel and hit the bell icon so that whenever i drop interesting mathematics videos you will be notified share this video to your friends and god bless you bye